Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 62 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I'm going to be playing with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fluids and gases. That's the plan, at least. Uh, so our goal is to power up the fission reactor that we started making last episode. That's this guy right here. Uh, in order for him to run, though, we're going to need to generate some fissile fuel. Uh, that goes into the fission reactor with water, and it creates steam and nuclear waste. Uh, the steam is going to be pumped into this industrial turbine that we made last episode, uh, which will turn the steam back into water, but will also spin the turbine, generating lots of RF. Uh, so lots of power production, but more importantly, what I'm after here is the nuclear waste itself, because nuclear waste can be turned into plutonium or polonium. Those are the two outputs from nuclear waste that we can get. Uh, polonium uh, can eventually be used to make polonium pellets, which are used for some really fancy things that I want to get, uh, or it can be turned into antimatter. Uh, at quite a radical amount, uh, like a lot of polonium makes a really tiny amount of antimatter. And antimatter can be used for all kinds of cool stuff, uh, including some some pretty you know powerful upgrades. Uh, antimatter pellets are eventually makeable with some you know get you some really neat upgrades. So I do want to get that eventually. But the main thing I'm focused on right now uh, is turning the polonium into polonium pellets, so we can get uh, a couple things. Specifically, I'd like to get the mecha suit. So the whole set of mecha suits going to need a handful of polonium pellets. Um, we can also turn this stuff into plutonium, uh, which will get me plutonium pellets. Uh, and the plutonium pellets can be turned into a couple of things that are going to be useful. The SPS casing, this is what's needed to make antimatter. Uh, and then the chemical injection chamber can turn plutonium, uh, along with just a little bit of hydrogen chloride, into some reprocessed fissile fragments that can go back into uh, fissile fuel. So it's like a loop type of thing, right? Like fissile fuel turns into waste, turns into plutonium, turns into fissile fuel. Uh, I forget the exact numbers, but <clears throat> so we can either basically use it to make more more fuel or we can use it to make uh, the other stuff that we want to get. So that's the plan. So today's episode, I want to focus on all the processing line that's needed to get to nuclear waste. So let, or, or well, fissile fuel really, um, and then into the fusion reactor to get nuclear waste. So fissile fuel <clears throat> is made if you're not making it with the reprocessed thing, is made in an isotropic centrifuge from uranium hexafluoride, makes makes your, makes your fissile fuel. Uranium hexafluoride is a chemical infuser between uranium oxide, which just needs yellow cake uranium, which is just an enrichment chamber version of uranium ingots. So pretty straightforward to get that piece of it. Uh, and then you need hydrofluoric acid, which needs fluorite, which we've been mining, uh, and sulfuric acid, which we can get uh, there's a couple ways to get it. Let's see. I'm just curious if there's like a better way. No, not really. So there's uh, basically what you want to get for sulfuric acid. You need water vapor, which comes from deconcentrating water. Uh, and then you're going to need sulfur trioxide, which is sulfur dioxide with a little extra oxygen. Oxygen, remember, we get from, you know, splitting up water into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and then sulfur trioxide. So sulfur dioxide comes from a chemical oxidizer with sulfur dust. So these are all the things we need to do in order to get uranium fissile fuel. So a couple questions. First, how am I for sulfur? Not bad. Uh, could be better. Just checking to see if there's fancier ways to get sulfur at this point because um, there's a couple different kinds of sulfur obviously I think so this is sulfur that comes from thermal and in, in theory it should work I would think uh, and then there's also sulfur dust from the thermal series that is also available here and that you can just turn gunpowder into sulfur so if we had a problem with sulfur what we could do uh, would be to set up a creeper farm and farm creepers in the little area over there with the creepers and all the things that could be cool. Uh, you can also turn charcoal into sulfur. Look at that, in a pressurized reaction chamber with oxygen and water. That's not bad. That's not a bad recipe. So that's another way to do it, or coal dust, or just charcoal itself. All right, so charcoal into sulfur is also a thing if we decide we need to go that route. So obviously some pretty cool ways to get sulfur as needed. So sulfur is not gonna be too much of a problem. Uranium, we've got a decent amount of uh, uranium ingots which we can then uh, just enrichment chamber directly into yellow cake uranium. We get two per, uh, per uranium and get there, so that should be pretty good. My real question is where to put this? 
Because this is going to be a lot of stuff, right? It's going to be a large footprint, a large area, making a lot of things. Um, so the real big question is where? Where should I put this? Should I build it out by my nuclear reactor, which would kind of make sense? And, and because we already have a network receiver out here, it shouldn't be too hard uh, to set up, you know, important export buses and all that good stuff. Or uh, should I just build it in my main base and like have a basement or something like a sub basement for, for nuclear processing? I don't know. What do you think about it? All right, guys. Just did a little terraforming here, uh, and you can see I've got sandstone everywhere. So this will help as I'm going to want to basically have an underground area within which I can do just a little bit of placing of like cables and stuff like that. So I'm just going to spend a moment or two here clearing out. Of you guys are loud. Goodness gracious. Hello, Ed. Hello, Ed from Wraith. I do like those raids that just pop up out of it. It's always a jump. It's a, I'm always like, ah, what's going on? All right. <laughs> every time. It gets me every time. And I do legitimately enjoy it. It's hilarious. All right. So I'm just going to clear out a little bit here. Um, shouldn't need to be too much. All right. And there shouldn't be much by way of falling stuff at this point. Cool. Back in a sec. Now, eventually, this may all be encased in a building, but we'll kind of figure it out as we go. So let's start close to here. We will start down at this end of the line, because basically I went I went backwards, right? So the left side here is like the first item I need to make sulfur dioxide. So that should be pretty straightforward, right? We can make ourselves an interface, um, and we should also get some logistical transporters. If we're going to be using mostly... Um, oh, really? Did I not teach you how to make those? My bad. Uh, if we're going to be making a lot of this, right? It's not that big a deal. Really? I didn't teach you? Okay, my bad. My bad. We'll have a few logistical transporters. I don't know how many of those we're going to need. If we get stuck, we can always use the, the lower tier ones. Not a big deal. Um, but we'll take our interface, right? And our cables. And we'll just keep a little bit of sulfur in stock. Because we've got a handful of it. And if we need to get more, we can. Right? We can totally get more sulfur. Uh, but we'll start with this and kind of expand from there. So let's start with you down here. And I don't want either of you on my hotbar at the moment. Okay. That should be cool. And then uh, an interface for kind of keeping in stock stuff. Yes, beautiful. Perfect. And you'll uh, transfer out to, and I put all my things in here, but the sulfur dioxide is the chemical oxidizer. That's the first machine we're going to need uh, to interface with, right? So you'll need some power. So let's be prepared to run power down here as well. And we may wind up, you know, obviously with a, with a few, you know, wiry things happening. We'll do our best to not be too dire wiry. So you're going to be a universal cable coming down here with a flux point. And we'll get all the speed upgrades and all that nonsense, you know, in a bit, right? So that's your chemical oxidizer. Uh, we will ultimate logistical transporter you. Uh, and we will, do I have my doohickey? If I do, it might be in here. Oh, no, it is actually on my normal spot. Sweet. Okay. So that... And then your side config for items, the back will be red input, right? Because that's what the back is here. Items config. Shouldn't that be, uh, be good? Gases, energy, what's wrong with you? That should really be the easiest thing in the world to set up. <laughs> that should be perfect. What is wrong with you indeed? Ultimate logistical transporter. That's you. You're the right thing. Am I missing something here? Items. Input. All sides are input. So that confirms that we didn't do something derpy with sidedness. Logistical. Huh? Huh? That'll make no sense. 
I should probably have you down here ready to go. Let's try you. You should legitimately be just, you know, super cool about getting sulfur and putting it right in here. Maybe I have to change the directionalness of it. No, that seems right. Transporter config. Strict input off. Yeah, this, this is not what's necessary. We do just put sulfur in here, right? Chemical oxidizer, is this the right? Oh, no. What am I doing wrong here? Chemical oxidizer. You don't accept this sulfur? Oh. Do I have to, like, turn you actually into proper sulfur dust? That could be a thing. That could be a thing. Um, hey, why did you get turned off? Did I? I ran out of power here. Haha. -ha. I mean, that's a good enough reason for anybody to turn off. And then you can go there. Activate. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's your problem. Is it doesn't, the, the sulfur is not ore dictionary with sulfur dust. So can I get sulfur dust from sulfur? I mean, we have some sulfur dust, obviously. Um, we could set up something like that if we want to turn charcoal into it. But the other option would be a pulverizer can craft it, and that's about it. A pulverizer can craft it, and that's about it. So we should, we should set up a pulverizer recipe. Do we have one of those hooked up to this? We do. So I'm gonna set up sulfur equals sulfur dust. But we want it in the pulverizer so he knows that he's a processing recipe here. Pop you into there. And then real quick, whip me up a crafting card. Cook up some of that, which should run pretty quick because you still have upgrades, I presume. Yeah. It's been a while since I touched my thermal machines, but good to see that their upgrades are still intact. All right, so there's your pro I'm like, why am I not able to do this thing? And then the crafting card, and then we are good to go here. So you can crafting card your way. We're going to need this crafting card anyway. Uh, so you keep 10 in stock at all times, and he should start crafting, and then that'll be cool. Beautiful. And now we're getting sulfur dioxide. Step one, complete. All right, now sulfur dioxide needs to combine with oxygen to make sulfur trioxide in a chemical infuser. So what we're gonna do is get ourselves another chemical infuser. Boop. You're gonna go right here with a universal cable. Boop. And then you're gonna get the sulfur dioxide from the left. Perfect. That's what I wanna see. And then on the right, we're gonna wanna pipe in, uh, let's see, sulfur trioxide. So we could, uh, or we could pump it into the back, maybe for oxygen. Back sound like a good plan. I feel like a back's a good plan, right? And then that will, sulfur trioxide, which will combine with water vapor. Yeah, so let's put water back here. Yeah, I like this plan. So we'll have oxygen coming in here and then we'll have water vapor coming in here, and both of these machines will access the water that we're gonna set up. That sounds like a, I like that. All right, so yeah. So then we're going to want oxygen from the electrolytic separator. Okay, so that'll be you. And then the rotary condensator will be you. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Um, so for, for everything on this guy, we're gonna wanna turn him off. I don't want you taking in or sending out any fluids or nothing. Just just don't do anything, okay? That would that would be pretty much the ideal situation. Don't do nothing at the moment, either of you guys, right? So electrolytic separator, so then we're gonna want uh, pipes, 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 mechanical pipes. Okay, so you will both, uh, for fluids on the back, can input. And then you, for fluids on the back, can input. And then I think I didn't make a pump, but I should make a pump. I should make a pump. And that pump will be important to get water. Deal? Uh, and we're probably going to want, like, a stack each of upgrades. So I'm going to want you, and I'm going to want you, and then I'm going to ask for 64 of you, and energy upgrade 64. 
I love that that wasn't a problem. I love when we reach a point in our in our Let's Play series where saying, hey, I want a stack of something expensive. And it's like, okay. You, you, and you, and then pump. And I would really like this pump. That's probably like the worst place to put it, huh? Uh, we should probably have the pump here. Yeah, that could be cool. Or we could go this whole thing down one. Maybe this whole thing down one wouldn't be a bad idea. I like that plan, right? So we'll recess this water bit into the into the ground a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could even cover that up, which would be cool. Um, yeah, that should be fine. And then you know what we could do, which would be even cooler. I don't think this has to be a three by three, by the way, but we could do this for universal cabling. Yeah, I like this plan, you ready? Trying to keep this as neat and tidy as possible. That should be cool. Now you guys are electrolytically separating hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen we're just gonna dump, or hydrogen we're gonna dump excess on. I don't think we need hydrogen at all for this line. Now you need to be oxygen out the front. So what we're gonna do is say gases on the front will be cyan output, because this is cyan output, right? So oxygen will come into here, and you are going to side config, let's, um, items is all off. You can input one on the left, input two orange will be on the back. So now if I connect a gas line here, Oxygen, beautiful, beautiful, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mute the mechanism noises. Um, there we go. Mechanism machines, like they're cool, but I don't want there to be too much noise because that can get really tedious really first. Um, cool beans. So now for you, I want to make sure that you're not. Can I? If I set this to none, does that mean I can now immediately put an ultimate pressurized tube right here without you connecting? Yes. Cool. Now, you should have been accepting fluids in the back, right? Fluids, input, back. I might need to flip you. How do we flip this thing again? Toggle operation. There we go. Water comes in, water vapor comes out. And now for gases, this is fluids, for gases, we want output on the front. And then water vapor should be coming out. That'll be planned for our next thing. I don't want that there yet, though. So that's fine, right? Um, and how are you doing, Pump? Are you keeping up with the uh, water demands? Pretty good. Pretty good. So hydrogen will dump excess. Oxygen will back stuff. Kind of quite. Yeah, they're both running. They're both running, so that's cool. Why isn't hydrogen going up? I guess it's already dumping. It's excess, I guess. That's cool. So oxygen is increasing over here and you're making sulfur trioxide, which is great. We are already hilariously out of sulfur. So charcoal farm in the future. Okay, now sulfuric acid is a combination of sulfur trioxide and water vapor, right? And that is in the chemical infuser. I do have another one. Oh, good, it's almost like I was prepared for this. All right, so your side config, let's turn all the things off. Because we don't want to let nothing happen, right? So you are going to gases, is this a gas? I don't even know. Sulfur trioxide, I guess, that sounds like a gas, doesn't it? So gases on right is output. And then you, uh, gases on left is input. Sulfur trioxide, beautiful. And then 
in the back for gases will be input two and ultimate pressurized tube can go here and then there's your water vapor beautiful and i guess you on power should be input on the bottom did i mess with power on any of you other guys i may have energy is good energy is good energy is good I feel like I messed with somebody's power by mistake. But no, I did a fine job. Only this one did I mess with by mistake. So yeah, energy on all sides, I don't care, right? And there's your sulfuric acid. So we got oxygen, water vapor, sulfur trioxide, sulfuric acid. Now, in order to, <clears throat> um, we want to combine that with uranium hexafluoride. Or to make uranium hexafluoride, we need the, sulfur the hydrofluoric acid, which is what we have. I hope is what we're, sulfuric acid plus fluorite in a chemical dissolution chamber. I can manage that. I can manage that. Chemical dissolution chamber. Energy. Chemical dissolution chamber. And again, off with your outputs. Okay, so <clears throat> you're going to take sulfuric acid, which I guess is a gas. I would think that's, you know, a liquid, but whatever. But there's no fluid output, so I assume it's a gas. Output blue right. Okay, and then you, for, flu for gases, will be input left. And there's your sulfuric acid. And then we want fluorite. We'll keep half a stack in you. And we might want to filter these things. So let's get one of those filtery doohickeys. So from mechanism, the logistical sorter. Yeah, give me one of these. These things are great. It is a great way to sort your stuff. Uh, I just need to figure out, I'm, I'm thinking items along the top. Would that make sense? I think that makes sense. So we want to stick you in the right direction here. And then we will have logistical transporters coming up. All right, so you for items can input on the top. You for items can input on the top, okay? But we're gonna color these dudes. We're gonna make you yellow for sulfur okay and we're gonna make you how about oh you don't have a white color or gray boo i thought this was the whole spectrum i guess we'll do blue for fluorite right so didn't i grab half a stack of fluorite i thought i did maybe i was paying not attention but you interface export fluorite okay and then you new filter so logistical sorter can do some really cool sorting if you want to do some fancy stuff right so your job will be to um you sends a single item instead of a whole stack each time overrides min max set for item stacks it doesn't matter cycles between all connected inventories when sending items we don't need round robin for this ejects items automatically to connected inventories we don't need that because we have piping here default color will be none um so we're going to do a new filter we want item stack and sulfur, right? Uh, did you eat up all my sulfur already? Oh, wow, that is bad times. Uh, let's get our fluorite here. And we're gonna do a new filter item stack. We're gonna say fluoride. Fluorite is going to eject to blue. Okay. And Is there anything else we need to do for this? Yeah, your color is blue. Item filter fluorite blue. Think that's cool? Ignored redstone, so like always run. Allow default is off, that's right. Do I have to set like a min and max of these guys? I'm not 100% sure why this isn't shooting yet. Size mode off, fuzzy mode off. Yeah, maybe he's rotated the wrong way. Hold on, let's wrench him. 
He might be rotated the wrong way. I'm not quite sure which of these inputs... Is, it, it, he has a direction he has to shoot, but I'm not sure which one's which. Yeah, I'm not sure why you're not going. Ejects... I'd auto on, auto off. You should be going now, I think. Unless there's something I'm missing. But yeah, you should be going. Unless you don't accept fluoride over here, which you should. Yeah, no, he totally accepts fluoride. So that's not the same problem as last time. Not the same problem as last time. Uh... Give me a minute. Actually, I have one more thought. Hang on, let me, I'm playing with this. It might be that it's not items that go in here, but infused types. Well, that's output only. That's also output only. Items, input, top. It's weird. It's weird. And check one thing. This will tell me if my logistical sorter is the problem or my doohickey. This is... Oh, you know what? It's because it's passing through the yellow here. That's why. That's why. Hang on. It's because it has to pass through the yellow. That's why. That's why. It's because it's passing through the yellow and it can't pass through the yellow. So if we make you blue, right, it can't pass through the yellow. See? That was it. It couldn't go through the yellow pipe. I remember now. Haha. <laughs> so what I should probably do is break this and break this and make it like that. And that's a little bit better. I think that's cool. All right, so now you're making hydrofluoric acid. So we definitely need to get more sulfur going on, which we can get from charcoal. So we'll set that up in a bit. All righty then. So uh, just fix this up. So I got uh, sulfur dust in here. We can now add a new filter item stack. We'll grab a little bit of sulfur dust for that. Uh, item stack, sulfur dust, boom. And you're gonna be yellow, save, go. Beautiful. How cool is that? It works. Cool. Yeah, the logistical sorter, really nice way to, I mean, there's a ton of filters you can put into this thing. I haven't gotten deep into it, but obviously there's item stack filters, there's tag filters, there's material filters, there's mod ID filters. You can do a lot to really sort and, and route items around automatically. It's a really powerful device. Um, but either way, I also set up back home charcoal into sulfur dust. So that's totally doable. And uh, you are doing all your things now that I would like to see you do. So you're making hydrofluoric acid. Cool. So hydrofluoric acid off the list. Now uranium hexafluoride needs hydrofluoric acid, which is now here. Uh, and uranium oxide, which is just yellow cake uranium. Cool. Uh, so great, another yellow thing. <laughs> Not a big deal. So we'll do a chemical oxidizer probably here, and then uranium hexafluoride is a chemical influ infuser. So let's get a chemical infuser. Do I need another infuser? I might have miscounted on my infusers. There's a, uh, no, no, that's a metallurgic infuser. I want a chemical infuser. Make all the things for chemical infuser. There you go. And we'll have some more Power, ultimate universal cables, chemical infuser, right? And I'm gonna make sure that you're going to input on the red for gases, but I'm gonna make sure everything else is off for a moment. And then you're going to side config gases output on the right. So there's your hydrofluoric acid, cool. And that's your chemical infuser, so that looks good. And then you, chemical oxidizer, will none of the things so items is going to be input on top and what we're going to want is let's go orange because it's you know close enough hopefully orange is a color we can have
Do I need you in wrench mode? No. How do I change colors again? Oh, because that's a mechanical pipe. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> they look similar. I'm sorry. What do you want from me? Uh, that's right. We don't have ultimate logistical transporters, do we? Yeah, because we forgot to program those. All right, hold on. So I will probably need to do this. I'm just going to get a couple of them manually real quick because it shouldn't take long. Come on. There we go. And then that will craft everything we need to upcraft it. And then I'll program those two logistical dudes back home later on at some point. All right, so there, and then you're gonna be set to... Mm, there is no orange, huh? So let's go dark red, how's that sound? Okay, and then you're going to want some uranium stuff, which we may have to teach back here. So you're going to be, uranium is going to go in an enrichment chamber to make that. Your enrichment chamber is here. You're going to give me like 10 of those, please. And that should be nice and quick. Beautiful. I, I personally like this whole line of automation that you have to do. Like, it really makes you plan out a whole setup, right? Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to keep 10 in stock. Nothing's going to... It should craft them on demand. Good. And then over here, we'll do a new filter for yellow cake uranium going to dark red and save. Cool. And that will make uranium oxide, which we will gases... Um, let's make sure that you're set for orange on the right, and then you're going to gases output on the left, and now we're making uranium hexafluoride. Booyah! Which we can pump into an isotopic centrifuge to make fissile fuel. How cool is that? And we, we managed to do it almost entirely without having pipes in between anywhere, which is kind of neat, I think. So that means you're going to come here, and we're going to want you Okay, so your gases, your back will be your input, and your gases front will be output. Sweet! And then a little bit of muting happens. And you're making fissile fuel, which is cool. Which is cool, which I think is a gas, by the way. So we're going to want a gas tank. Uh, we'll get like a, you know, well, it looks like we got a basic one that's empty, right? So I can put you there, and then we can set your gases output front. And you... No? Fissile fuel. Chemical none. Am I missing something here? Oh, you're dumping. <laughs> well, there's your problem. <laughs> That's what I get for using an existing chemical tank that I had. Dumping was enabled. It was just like, I'm just voiding all this stuff you spent an entire episode making, Direwolf. Thank you, Fissile Fuel. You're great. Now, all these machines can and will probably in a moment be sped up. I'll probably handle that off camera because we're hitting the wrapping up point here. But the gist is, is this is your production line, right, for all things... Fissile fuel. And we now have fuel that we can dump into our nuclear reactor to start producing the stuff we need to make. So this, not bad. Look at it. This is rather compact, to be fair. This is super compact, right? We could even make these things more compact if we weren't using mechanisms item transfer. If we used a different mods item transfer, we wouldn't need to be quite so big. Uh, but it's fine. I think it's cool. I think it looks good, right? I think it looks really good, to be honest with you. I'm very pleased with this setup. Doesn't look cool. I think it's, I mean, just, you know, it's me. It's me. All right, so we've got a bunch of upgrades in here, which we will, um, you know, obviously be uh, put into use. 
For now, though, I believe it is well past wrapping up point. So, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll come back next time and uh, see what kind of trouble we can get into with nuclear reactors. That's the plan, at least. Uh, so we'll see here. This thing obviously speeds that up quite a bit, and you're going to start building that up, and then you can go a little bit faster, and you can go a little bit faster, and now you're going crazy and producing all the sulfur trioxides. Cool. And we'll just kind of go down the line. All right, wrapping up point. Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.